so hey guys and welcome back to the channel it's chilo here once again as always but in case you're seeing me for the first time or you're just bumping into this video maybe youtube recommended me to you here is my intro <laughs> my name is chioma aka chilo i'm a nigerian and i'm currently living and studying here in japan okay on my channel i just basically show you a sneak peek about my life here in japan being a black girl or international student or foreigner however you choose to title it so what's today's video about today's video is actually about um um there was a time where i was always getting mails or dms revolving around oh um i want to come to japan and with my family or i want to come to japan i got a job or something but i'm scared like what's it like is the differences so much um the culture the these how how does it look like you have adapted well how does it feel like you fully um settled in those kind of questions right and most times i mean like i always say in my description box my email is for business inquiries uh, most times i might not get to really answer those dms because they are quite a lot on some day, on some days so that's why i came out here to do this video so in case you're watching me actually maybe you're watching me from nigeria or you're watching me from here in japan and you just want to know a little bit about nigeria i've seen a lot of people that said oh it's my video that made them to consider japan and so on and so this is just giving you a balance just like a balance of okay the differences between living in japan and living in nigeria of course i might not go too 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 in depth but as a human being the major differences you're going to face um, when you first land in Japan, living in Nigeria and living in Japan, and I might um, previously I was dodging or I was dodging doing this talk because I felt like eh, maybe I might have been out of touch of what was really happening in Nigeria. But then I just visited Nigeria recently, so my brain is really refreshed on the differences. And yeah, that's just what today's video is about. Okay. So I've actually been living in I've actually been living in Japan for more than four years now. Um, I think this September made it four years that I've actually been living in Japan. I came here for my master's and then I proceeded to doing my PhD. So I'm currently pursuing a PhD degree. And then I've lived in Nigeria, of course, all my life before I came to do my master's. So maybe I guess I'm in a good position to like talk about these differences because I've spent a considerable amount of years in both countries. So the very first difference I am going to talk about, of course, it is language. I think this video will be helpful both ways, both for Japanese people that watch my videos and for um, foreigners in Japan that watch my videos and are interested to know where I come from. So yeah, the the first difference I'm going to be talking about is definitely the language. I mean, how will I even go about this list without talking about the language? Um, Japanese, in Japan, the official language is definitely the Japanese language. While in Nigeria, the official language is English language, like the official mode of communication. Now, I'm not saying that we don't have other languages. That's the question I usually get a lot. We actually have a whole lot. I think more than 200 languages, like local dialects or local languages that are spoken in different states, in different local governments, in different villages in Nigeria. But because we have a lot of languages, or I don't know, but the major, like the official languages, that's what we are taught in school, what we are taught, what we are was in the most common in the market is English language. So if you're looking at coming to Japan and you're actually a Nigerian, it's something to really keep in mind that um, the average Japanese person speaks Japanese language. Now, of course, you're going to see here and there, like a few people here and there that speaks English. If your program is in English, maybe they've made pro provision for you to be taught in English. Just here and there but just keep in mind that one major difference is that every nigerian or like say every international student that come from an english-speaking country first meets is the language i've said this i've given this example um before that um when i first landed in um, japan i landed tokyo so um the hotel that was booked for me i remember going there to the receptionist i'm like hello my name is choma da, 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 da. the woman was just looking at me like i'm not saying a lot of times even this the speed in which um foreigners speak the english could also throw them off balance so it's just important to note that the official mode of language in japan is japanese language while for nigeria is english language right okay so the second point i'm going to be talking about is definitely people people I mean people this one it's the 
I, I have always known this point, right? But the switch always comes on me each time I visit Nigeria. Now, both areas have the advantages and disadvantages. I kid you not. Like, when I'm in Nigeria, I tend to sometimes miss Japan for some things. And when I'm in Japan, I tend to sometimes miss Nigeria for some things. So I'm not in any way trying to imply that this place is better than this place or this country is better than this country. I'm just trying to state out obvious differences that I have noticed. So talking about people now nigerians are very vocal people we are i don't know very expressive set of people we can be very expressive set of people and i remember yoshi saying this in one of the videos that i did with him that one of the things that he noticed about me or that he liked about me was the fact that i'm quick to tell you that i didn't i didn't understand why you did this or i do not get why you did this or i did not like when you did this like it's it's an average Nigerian thing. Now, I think I have said this over and over and over again on this channel, that the average Japanese person is very shy, very silent. They are not as expressive. They are not as vocal. A lot of times, they might have something to say and till they are asked or till they are prompted, oh, um, what do you think about this? Or, oh, well, what do you have to say about this? Before they will not be like, oh, I don't worry. Sometimes they will tell you, don't worry, till you now insist before they kind of give you their own school of thought or their own peace of mind. So the average Japanese person is very shy. Like, um, one of the closest people I had in the lab as a, as a last year, I think, and uh, I used to tease him that when I first came to Japan, when I first came to the lab, right, I would see this, my friend, and he would just... <clears throat> He would just face his phone. He would just avoid me. Like, and then when we become when we became very close friends, I was always teasing him. Like, what exactly was the problem? He was like, I don't know. I don't know. Um, maybe language. Maybe this. Maybe that. I'm just like, oh my god. Now the average Japanese person is very shy, and it makes the the country very quiet, right? So if you're a Nigerian or you're a foreigner generally, and you're looking forward to coming to Japan, and you're coming from a country that you know your neighbors, your neighbors know you. In short, like I'm filming this video on a Sunday and um, like today that is Sunday, maybe you just sit outside, you take you through, you greet your neighbor. It's actually not always, it's not, it's not the case here in Japan. Japanese people are quite, you know, very to themselves, very like, I don't know how to explain it. So yeah, that's the second point, people. And the third point, the third point I'm going to be giving is food see i'm a foodie i've said this thing over and over and over again on this channel if you're an old subby you know that i don't joke with my ball cooking i love food and also if there is any difference in any country i ever visit in this life that i will be quick to notice is definitely food so what about food um nigeria in nigeria our food is spicy i think it's just safe to say it's very spicy but in japan the food here is actually i don't know how to call it it's just not spicy it's when you eat it for the first time it's like it's blank like you're not getting a taste but it's very healthy i kid you not it's very healthy check your google japanese people live one of the longest like they have one of the longest life expectancy in the world and a lot of research has linked this to the food they eat they have very healthy eating now when i first came to japan now let me just give you the examples as regards feeding right when i first came to japan i brought a lot of food stuff but at the same time i was very willing to like try i mean it doesn't make sense to live in a country go through it in years or for years and then you're not really like experiencing the culture I remember trying the food the first time in church because in church we used to have this after um, these things in church or in lab and I tried the food and I was just like I was so excited like okay 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 let's try it and I put the first one in my mouth and I'm just like okay it was just not spicy and i've tried to ask this question to a lot of foreigners a lot of nigerians self that have come here and one of the things every almost every nigerian i know that um that has come here will always says oh it's the food is the food the difference is world apart i'm not even kidding you it's world apart if you've watched my video of nigerian trying japanese food 
and the other one where i had my japanese friends japanese guys trying my um, nigerian food that video is more than a million views now you would see that the difference was so clear they kept saying oh this food tastes like this and i kept saying in the in the other video that oh no sushi is raw fish nigerians don't really eat anything raw we either cook it you know, we either boil it fry it grill it there is just some rishi rishi to our food but japanese people have a lot of you know f um raw things like fresh raw things like especially when it comes to their seafood so definitely the number three is food so if you're coming to japan and you're nigerian one of the advice i always give people is come with a sustainable sustainable amount of something to start with so that worst case scenario you have a soft ease into now I can survive in Japan. I've been I've traveled for a holiday in another city for one week and I didn't cook in the one week. I was just eating Japanese food. I can survive if that's the only like worst case scenario I can actually survive. So what I'm just trying to say is find a way to like completely like to come so that you have a very soft landing and then you ease into it. It's not as bad, but you have to be very open minded because the difference is water path like i said okay so the fourth the fourth point or the fourth um difference i'm going to talk about is the environment like just the environment like just the environment this one was another reality that really hit in when i just visited nigeria um so japan is extremely quiet see there's sometimes when i'm shooting videos in japan eh nobody is telling me that i'm making noise but I'm just feeling in my mind like, ah, it's like I'm too loud. So sometimes I play back my videos and I'm like, was I whispering? I don't know if you get me. Like, I've, I'm now feeling like it's like I was whispering, something in that line. When, like, I don't know how to explain it. It's so, so quiet. Well, Nigeria, Nigeria is bubbly. Nigeria is very bubbly. As soon as my plane was stopping down, like, um, Touching down Nigeria, like I, I stopped first at Lagos, Nigeria, like from the airports, from the, to the market, to the shoppings, to the, this, Nigeria is very bubbly. I mean, it's also a reflection of the people. Do you understand? Like I said in the first point, um, Nigerians are vocal, they are expressive because I mean, if you have people that, the people that, people that make up a country are people that talk and express them so that means the country will not be too quiet but here in japan the people here are very quiet they are shy so the environment is so silent like your heater would be on and you'll be hearing it this as in i don't know how to explain it it takes you to come to japan to fully experience when people tell you that japan is a very very it's an extremely quiet country so yeah i i think um i've had I've had um, reverse culture shock, both cases, right? When I first came to Japan, I could not understand in any way why it was too quiet. But at the same time, I noticed that if I call home and um, there is maybe the person I'm calling is in the market, like there's some sort of noise, I'm always quick to say things like, please, the place is noisy. And no, 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 it's noisy. What I would just say is if you're a Nigerian or you're a foreigner and you're looking at coming to Japan, it's just important to know like they're saying, they always give. To be for one is to be for and when you know, when it, when it happens, nothing shocks you. Like you're like, well, okay, yeah, she said it. The fifth, the fifth and last difference is definitely religion, culture. That's a very ambiguous word because like I've said in a previous video, religion, culture also cuts across food, which I've talked about already, people, way of life and all. But under this point i'll just talk about religion right which for obvious reasons people probably already know this but i think it's usually exaggerated <laughs> in nigeria right um so in japan what's the most common religion no religion i'm not even lying to you you guys have had this in the video i did with i think it was with shigma or yoshi where both of them said they don't have like one that they can really identify with like no religion is the most common religion however if you're talking about okay what is what is, what does the world know about japan it's buddhism and shintoism when you talk about nigeria right when you talk about our faith you know we have um christians we have muslims 
we have some traditionalists. There is there are other ones, but I think the two most common um, um, religion is Christianity and Muslim. I'm a Christian now, but like I said, this is one of the points that are that is so much exaggerated and I want to talk about it. When I was coming to Japan or when the information of me coming to Japan came out, a few of my friends that knew, you know, one of the things they kept asking was, oh, when you go there, don't change your feet. Oh, Shintoism. Oh, Buddhism. Oh, this, that. Oh, that. It's not as bad. Like I've said before in one of my videos, I actually went to four different churches before I even settled for the church that I currently attend in my city. Now, I know this is not the case for every single person. I've heard this before from a friend that it differs from city to city. Some cities are more rural than some other cities. But this is just to say that even though, even though, Japanese people will not come and hold you in your throat to convert you. They don't even believe in that whole door-to-door -door thing. They're not going to force you to go through their faith. And they are very accommodating. I've had cases in the lab where we are supposed to have like a cleanup and, it's, and it falls on Christmas Day. My professor or my secretary is like, oh, it's Christmas. Choma is a Christian. She won't be able to attend. So maybe we should give her her share to clean before Christmas Day. It happened last year. So nobody is forcing anything down on you. So this point is for those people who are looking to come to Japan. Maybe you're from, coming from Nigeria or you're coming from any other part of the world um, and your concern has been fate. Please, it's not like they're going to choke it down your throat to convert to Shintoism or Buddhism. They are very accommodating about your faith, but at the same time, um, like Google said, and Google was right, um, the percentage of Christians here is about 1% or even less than 1%. So yeah, these are the five points I have to say about this video, and I hope you find it really helpful, especially for the people who have been very inquisitive, scared, anxious, I don't know how to put it and send me those mails. Hope you find this video really helpful. If you did, please tell me in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you next time on Chilo Talks. Bye for now, guys.